I have to go lay down. And for some reason, I thought, check, check YouTube. The first thing that pops up is this girl and her video is about spiritual warfare. It's just a coincidence, though. Now, back to the dream. It was so real that after it was done, I walked outside to see if there were footprints in the snow around my house. I woke up with marks on me. If the way I could describe it is, if there's levels, like these things that were on me were sealed. They didn't send some little Loki trickster, prankster, poltergeist. I never saw none of them. I saw the wings. And I didn't see them. I recognized it. These things were massive. Massive. I could not get away. They had my legs pinned and my arms pinned. And I'm struggling on this bed. and I could hear them talking and what they're saying, but I can't. That part is not there. They are. Uh, when I woke up, I had marks like I was being held on the inside of my arm. There was nail marks. Now, if I had fallen asleep like this, they'd be on the outside. And the nails were in the pattern that the hand came over this way and held me. My wife saw them. I got scratches on me. I got the chills. Whew. I finally get away from them. For some reason, they keep trying to get this blanket over my head. I finally get away from them and run out of the into the hallway. And I keep thinking, is she back yet? Is she back yet? She'll believe me. She'll believe me. And my wife and my child weren't home at the time in the dream. They weren't home then either. At this, at my house then. As I'm running through, I'm flicking lights on. And I make it to the front of the house. And then the front of the house turns into my stepmother's house. And she used to live back next to my grandmother's business. So I'm looking out her front window in front of my grandmother's business to see if Liz's truck is back here. And as I'm looking... All the lights that were on, and there was one of those old lamps that you touch and it turns on. All the lights go off, and it's just not a dark, it's black. The absence of light. There was no, once the light was off, it wasn't like you could see a shadow. It was black, because those things were that big that they absorbed the light. They were opposite of light. It was so, and in my head, and when you get a dream from God, it's weird because... That thing is actually happening. It's that real. But at the same time, your conscious mind on the couch or in your bed is analyzing it and knows that it's coming from him and getting the signs out of it and what he's trying to tell you. And uh, right as they were getting close again to me, somebody intervened. And whoever it was was bigger than them. Because they were just poof. And I woke up. Now, whatever intervened. The only thing that I could think of could have been was either God himself or an archangel. Because there was nothing powerful enough to stop them things. And the whole time I was going through it on the bed. I remember thinking like I can't get the words out. How come I'm not saying what I'm supposed to say. In the name of Jesus Christ I command you. I bind you. In the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the blood of the cross, nothing was coming out. Like, I couldn't function it out. I know what I was trying to say, but my brain's thinking, why isn't this working? Why? Because I wasn't saying it. And then right as that happened at that front window, the words came out. But, something else stopped them. It was this massive, powerful, huge presence I didn't see it I I heard it I think I felt it no I don't know if I felt it I knew that it occurred I was conscious of it 
Like, I didn't get touched by God at that moment or nothing like that. It's just either he shouted or an angel shouted or somebody said a prayer for me at that exact moment because they were gone. No. I woke up with marks on me, man. Marks. And I seem to be getting wounds from nowhere for some reason. And I think it has to do with what I'm supposed to do. I believe that it's all predestined that God knew what his job for us was before we were born. <laughs> and I've been battling with it. Because I told I've already told him, like, I'll die for you. There's nothing in me. Except for you. I have no fear. Of any of them. I truly believe everything that he's showing me is going to come to pass. Some of it I'm afraid to even say because it involves my child. There's all kind of people out here claiming to be watchmen and prophets and soldiers for Christ. But they don't speak the truth. They speak their truth. Their interpretation of the truth. That's not his truth. There is a very large lie being portrayed. And it's going to cause the falling away. I have felt his pain. He's pushed it on me. And how many of his children are being deceived? And how many of his children are believing a lie? And how many of his children are going to turn their back on him because they believed on man before his word? It is the most heartbreaking feeling. If my child were to pass away, it wouldn't even hurt me like this. Because it's not coming from me. It's coming from him. I'm going to make a video about it because I don't have a choice. I beg them, please don't make me do this. They're going to be so sad. And that's when he let me know how sad he is. And I can't pick and choose what I say or what I do. It's either all or nothing. It's so hard. To believe. That you're actually chosen for something. And after all I've seen and everything else, it's still hard. And I've seen heaven. I know the beauty of it. The war we're in now is very, very spiritual. In the end, it'll be fought with bullets. 